You're listening to the Drummer Daily Podcast, the only daily podcast dedicated just to drummers. Go to my website at danielhadaway.com. Hey, how's it going? Welcome back for another edition of Drummer Daily. I'm Daniel. Thanks for listening. Uh, Today, right now, I'm sitting down with a homemade latte in my hand. Um, My wife and I are pretty into coffee, pretty much, you know, really into coffee. And, uh, I make, I make normally some kind of pour over coffee in the morning. And then I, we also have a really nice espresso machine that, um, that we, that she uses a lot throughout the day. And I use every afternoon to wake me back up after I want to take a nap after lunch. Uh, and so that's, that's what I'm doing right now. I'm drinking my latte and I'm actually not standing up. I sound probably more sedated than I usually do because I'm not pacing around like I normally uh, do. I'm trying to trying to lock myself down here a little bit and focus um, because I after I get done with this podcast, um, I I'm going on vacation uh, next week, and so I'm going to I don't want you to miss out on any podcasts. So I'm going to pre-record um, all of next week's podcasts. Um, so that I can enjoy the beach and not worry that I'm going to forget to do a podcast, but also you guys get to enjoy podcasts all next week. So I'm kind of like sitting down and in focus mode right now. Um, but what I want to talk to you about today, um, is an interesting concept about being late. And what I mean about being late is not showing up to a gig late. That is actually a bad thing. Um, definitely, when it comes to uh, when it comes to showing up for gigs or showing up for sessions, um, really for sessions. I mean, it's definitely true of anything. But when you show up, when it comes to studio sessions, the rule definitely about you know if you're not early, you're late. Definitely applies to studio sessions. So that's an extra tip. That's a bonus tip for you today. Is don't show up. Don't show up late to a studio session. Always show up early. Um, a lot of times when guys give you, um, they normally tell you, but a lot of times you might need to clarify if they tell you a time to be at a studio session, they might say, that might actually mean what they they say downbeat at such and such time. That means, you know, for a drummer, that's when the first, that's when you start tracking is that you got to get, get there earlier to set up your gear, get sound, all that stuff. Anyway, so don't be late for that stuff. But when it comes to playing drums and especially playing with a click track. Um, it's, this is one of those things that I've, it's kind of, kind of a phenomenon that I don't, it's like, I know we've talked before about, uh, how your drums sound lower in pitch when you stand out in front of them than when you're standing over them. And, and I think I kind of understand why, but I don't really know. This is definitely one of those things. Um, this is, um, about playing late when you're playing with a click. Um, and what I mean is, uh, uh, it helps a lot if you imagine uh, if you're recording drums and you see, you know, waveforms on the computer, the, the waveforms of your hit drum hits. And, you know, you see those little spikes whenever you hit a drum, you know, on each recorded track. And if, let's say, you had that, that grid and you can see if your drum hits are early or late or right on with, you know, the hits on the click track. Um, interesting thing about playing with a click track like that, though, is that a lot of times... Um, if you were to not look at that waveform, if you were just to listen with your ears, not listen with your eyes, as people say in the recording world, where you're looking to see if things are lined up and you actually are listening to see if they sound right or not, um, what you'll notice is if a drummer plays slightly behind the beat or at least misses a hit here or there that's not exactly on, um, but they end up being late, uh, it actually feels okay. Um, some guys um, make their living off of playing behind the beat all the time, in which case, you know, they have their own kind of feel and that that's great. Um, a lot of guys maybe hit their snares a little late behind the beat, but they do the kick and everything else right on the beat. So there's a lot of ways you can play around with it. But, uh, basically my, my thought is this, uh, if you're gonna, if you're going to miss a note, miss it late. And now I'm not saying, of course, you make a mistake. You can't control when you make a mistake, but there's ways of relaxing when you're playing where, um, you know, if you get a little too relaxed, you might play too much behind the beat. Um, and so a lot of this obviously goes into playing, um, playing relaxed and not being too tense. Um, but there's actually, there's actually a guy I know here in Nashville 
I'm not going to tell you his name, but he's a very, very much in demand drummer. And I know um, directly from speaking with other musicians that this, uh, this drummer is virtually impossible to track with if you're a bass player uh, and you're trying to track live and you want to listen to the click track too. This guy is virtually impossible to do that with because he plays so far behind the click that if you're a bass player who's you know a pretty rhythmic instrument and you're trying to to match up with something, you basically have to turn the click track off because if you're listening to the click track, it will be confusing, um, um, and because he's so far behind the beat. Um, and so bass players that I know that have tracked with him actually just, if they, as long as he's there and he's playing, they'll just turn the click track off and only listen to his playing. It feels great out of the, you know, they don't have to mess with anything and fix anything as far as like, you know, the timing, but it live sounds so far behind when you're listening to the click track, but when you hear it back, it sounds great. So some, like I said, some guys make their career out of that. I've actually worked with this guy before in other capacities and, um, it's been crazy because I'll I'll hear him track something, I'll be hearing the click track, and he'll, you know, there'll be like one little, you know, quiet part, you might hit one little symbol or something, and and you think, oh man, he, he, missed, he missed that, he's gonna have to go back and fix that. And then you hear playback after you finish the track, you know, and they haven't edited or anything, and just playing it right back to let you hear how it sounds like, and it sounds fine. It's like, oh, we don't need to fix that. And it's because whenever he does things like that, he always misses late. So that's my tip for you today is if you're going to make a mistake or you're going to do something and you have a tendency, just err on the side of being late. Um, it actually feels pretty good most of the time and you can get away with a lot, um, especially in slower songs if you end up being late rather than early. Um, I definitely do that, by the way. Um, like anytime like uh, with All Sons and Daughters stuff when I'm the band that I play for um, when we're live and like let's say the end of a song uh, you know it's kind of it kind of slows down tempo wise and like it's kind of and I'm not playing but like you know the, the piano's playing or something and they kind of they kind of slow down and do their own kind of ending exactly whenever they kind of feel like ending um, and I might want to do a cymbal swell with some soft mallets um, I can get away with doing something like that a lot better if I am late I mean, and I'm pretty darn late actually, you know, playing with it. Um, but if I'm early, it sounds terrible. So anyway, that's my tip for you today. Be late, not early. I hope that's useful to you and I hope you're doing well. I'll talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.